Hi, so I came up with this, which is a coppering solution. And it was a bit smelly and a bit difficult to use because it was in a liquid. So I decided to make it into a coppering gel, and that's what I've done. So what we've got here is a jelly-like coppering solution. Now this coppering gel, which is essentially copper nanoparticles in a jelly, incidentally, um, has some really interesting things it'll do. Now I've showed you some of them before, and it does exactly that same thing. If I put a bit on a little bit of green scourer and just give it a wipe over, it coppers it almost immediately. And that's very, very cool. And that's a very thin layer of copper and can be very useful for things. But that's not what I wanted to show you in this one. What I wanted to show you is this. <coughs> if we take a piece of mild steel, and what I've got here is a bit of twisted strand, um, stranded copper wire, incidentally, and connect the wire to some area of the steel, an area that we're not going to play it, Blob on some of our coppering gel. <clears throat> Fan those wires out into a brush. Now obviously it's only done this way because I'm doing it on a flat piece. You could equally do this in a jar if you like. And then just cover those wires up. And we'll leave that while I talk about it. Now, when it comes to coppering things with solutions, there are actually a lot of things that will in fact copper. Um, copper sulfate will do it. If you rub copper sulfate onto stainless steel, it, uh, sorry, onto mild steel, you'll get a coating of copper from it. But there's a slight problem with it in that coppering only happens as long as there's iron available to pick the iron off and replace it with the copper. Once it gets a layer of copper over the entire surface, that coppering stops. Um, and that's what's happening here, and what happens with um, copper sulphate as well. But what's happening here is something very, very different. That coppering doesn't stop. Now that's cool. Because the little brush that's in the wire is donating copper ions, and we've got a complete circuit to the steel, and that coppering solution is acting like a kind of gel electrolyte to complete a battery. So that coppering continues on, it's autocatalytic. Once there's a layer of copper laid down there, that layer just gets thicker and thicker and thicker. Now, it happens very quickly. So if you leave it for a very long time, what happens is you get quite an ugly coating. <coughs> it looks like this. I left that for about 15 minutes and it deposits so quickly, it pits like that. But that's actually 1.7 microns thick, so that's quite a thick layer of copper. But if we get it right and we just give it enough time, then instead of getting this really, really thin layer of copper that we've got here, we actually get a much thicker layer of copper, thicker than the single layer that you get with other copper salts. And this adheres really, really well. So just give that a couple of minutes and then we'll dump that back in there and then clean that surface. So now we've cleaned it off, and that much deeper pink is um, the thicker layer of copper. That coppery colour is where I wiped it off, so it's a very thin layer of copper. Now if I can uh, clean that up a little bit, and to be honest, you can clean it up with just about everything and anything, from a cloth to a bit of polish to a bit of wire wool, actually, we'll clean that nicely. And there you go. Right like a penny. If I take a bit of wire wool to it. There you go. Still nice and bright and coppery and adhering very well indeed. So there you go, the coppering gel. So you've seen it in copper just by wiping it on a piece of mild steel and give it a nice copper finish. But if you connect it up with a copper surface, a copper brush or some copper wires, either on a flat surface or in a jar or in a tank, and you connect that to your steel surface, it's actually autocatalytic for the deposition of copper. So that copper will just carry on getting thicker and thicker. Now, it is a bit quick, in fact, to make a good copper surface if you get over about half a mil or so of deposition. So you need to add something to that if you want a really thick copper coat. You need to add something like EDTA and just experiment with it to slow down the deposition rate so it doesn't dump all of that copper on there all at once. 
Anyway, I thought that was really, really interesting, and I thought you'd enjoy seeing it, so thank you for watching.